welcome to the third of four special Burton double episodes of the MadAxman.com podcast. In the first two episodes, you have heard how the samurai climb the table, he wins both in a samurai civil war and then again carrying on the victories against the Anglo-Irish. This time around, it's day two of Burton 2018 and the samurai are carrying on their European invasion. This time, they take to the battle mat against feudal English. The podcast also contains yet more hipster beer themed chat and most important part of the whole four-part special coming up too, an in-depth and insightful review of Asda's Curry in a Box. So, whatever format or device you're streaming, listening, or even watching this podcast through, sit back as we crack open some tinnies, chow down on the corner, and invite you to join us enjoying both the battle and the banter. Okay, so um, game number three, and we've had the curry, and we're now testing some downstream hybrid IPL, not even IPA, actually. I'm really not entirely sure. Indian pale lager? Indian pale lager, possibly. That's weird. It's in a bottle. It's um, got a QR code on the front. It's from um, the Downstream and Mourn Mountains Brewery. We're not entirely sure where. The um, the web address is an IO address, which is apparently British Indian Ocean Territory. Okay. And I suspect that's not the case. I suspect that's one of those domain name things that sounds quite cool and it's internet or something. But it's um it's a fascinating bit, isn't it? It's um, I'm I'm just, I'm not totally convinced I like it. It's it's like an IPA that's sort of missing something. Well when you I don't know it's when you, it's yeah it, initially the taste is quite lagery yeah and then it there's a um, really hoppy aftertaste kick which it could almost be an alcohol free IPA couldn't it I've never it's had an like alcohol free beer so I can't. oh right okay it's just got that missing something that's alcohol free but it's not you know it's um it's it's reasonable <clears throat> it's got a hop, hoppy aftertaste yeah. I do like hoppy beers so it's four and a half percent but interesting so yeah that to to round off the curry and um, as does five pound curry, um, d- d- delivers what it promises. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's so. a five pound curry, and I mean that in a complimentary way. Actually, it was yeah. um, edible. It's never going to be great. It's not even really a ten pound curry. I wouldn't have thought. Actually, maybe that's the way to question it. If it had been a ten pound curry, you, you, it would have been all right. Would have been all right. It's not, Fif- fifteen. You'd have been yeah. disappointed. But it's, it's it's a five pound curry for two with two yeah. naan breads, true yeah. onion bhaji. It's for a tenner that would have been fine. It's not yeah. the sort of thing that you're going to um, prepare to um, impress a lady. But if no, you've or, got or a gentleman, if that's yeah. your um, inclination. But if you've got a war game of mate that's come around that you just want to palm them off with some cheap shit, it's absolutely fine. I think you could be right. Yeah, and you know, the more beer we drink, the better in retrospect it will probably probably um, sound to be. The uh, naan bread. The naan bread. The naan bread was, was veering on the biscuity, really, yes. wasn't it? That that wasn't. That was just. That was a different product. Yeah, it's it's like when you're buying a computer, and it's like some of it's okay, but they they've saved money on the sound card. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they saved money on the sound card. Yeah. And yeah. I think we also probably did ourselves a somewhat of a disservice by by accidentally picking up the chicken korma and the the chicken meh, yeah. I think it was, or um, rather, oh, yeah. masala, rather than the, the jow frazi and the, the kick-ass one. Yeah. Because then, then you get a bit more oomph to it. Because that's yeah. quite easy to do, because chilies, you put them in, yeah. there you go. But we, yeah. we, we've had a couple of beers, it was a hearty meal, we both ate it. Was. it so and it, it, was, it was better than tomato sauce. carried out with on to game three game three and yeah, surprisingly top of the table and we'd had three. and we'd had a curry the night before in the in the classic next to what's that pub called in burton the tiny one um cooper's cooper's yeah. next to cooper's bring your own beer in um same, last, same curry house as last time same curry house last time same good curry yeah good curry very very oh, solid lovely. very parky by the time we got back snowing oh, that was a cold oh it's bitter oh yeah. it was bitter frightening so and and bitter was was what we had as well so that really fits together so the next day bright clear no no it wasn't a bright clear day looking out over feudal japan um and and we ended up facing off against a feudal english army 
which I think we made the initial mistake of thinking it must have been like the Anglo-Irish because it was... Exactly, if you like Irish feudal English, it's geographically close, that sort of thing. And, and we just guessed it would be the same. And the terrain was pretty much the same, big empty space in the middle. Although we did get the village. We got the village this time, which is nice, given, given the amount of work that had gone into making it. And um, we thought they'd have a lot of axemen in the middle. Um, did and they? they didn't know, not at all. But luckily, we still refused the we refused the middle flank, and um, by the looks of it, they had a whole mass of knights ready to charge straight down the middle, protected on on both flanks by bowmen, a bit more solid on on their right than than last time. So the people facing you are a bit more numerous. But still gaps. But still gaps, and um, a lot of bowmen on on my flank. And I think this time we've gone back to deployment number one. So starting right to left into the village, we were putting the warrior monks. They like it in the village. They love it in the village. That's what they do. A um, little bit of shopping, possibly, you know, a little go for a coffee, go for some sort of Japanese-based style. Listen thing. to one hand clapping. One hand clapping, yep. And then in the middle, our usual block of four heavy infantry surrounded by some bowmen. Big bit of a gap. Um, then your guys going into that... Um, Slightly unappealing looking um, water, watery field, and I presume your cavalry slightly slightly out of shot to the left. Indeed, and even that gap, it's, it's got um, the uh, mediocre spears pointing at it, and they can quite happily and quickly gallop up there if needed. Actually, this downstream is you know, sipping it. Yeah, it's growing on me. Maybe it's maybe it's getting the ounce to curry out of um, out of the mouth. Is a good one. So, so the bowman, this, this is on my flank. Just look how much, that's one, two, three, four, five units of bowmen, some javelinmen. That's all squishy stuff facing me. Very, very squishy. And that one, possibly they were unreliable. Well, possibly not. We're not entirely sure. Wouldn't really have worried us. So you can go back up yep. and let's try and give an idea of what our plan was. What was our plan? Look at the main shot. Okay. Um, wasn't it the same as, as every other game? Yeah, that sums up quite well, doesn't it? Don't find the middle collapse the left and yeah wing it slowly there. wing it from there i thought these these bowmen were a pretty squishy target and i could actually drive through okay the village with a bit of luck let's see how that works out let's see how that works out so look at this this is a huge gap in the middle and this must have been my command so i felt that over to the left you had a much better opportunity of running over these bowmen and whatever they were javelin men than than i did of trying to stand up to a huge wall of knights with an insecure flank on my left. I would concur with that. Yeah. So, so I, I lent you a couple of bowmen, or, or possibly the, the swordsmen. They drifted off to the left, and the rest of my command drifted off to the right, which, which effectively moved the gap from between your command and mine to right in the middle of mine. Um, Fine. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, yeah. nothing could possibly go wrong. Nothing could possibly go wrong. That chat. That trick, you know, and it left a bit of an open goal for the knights to charge into that big hole, and um, and there's plenty of open goals to choose from. Now, another great view of the wall. What a view of the wall! This is what this the weekend was all about, really. Um, the warrior monks into the village, pushing forwards. There are some cavalry backing up their bowmen and and their javelinmen, but you know, this is still a very solid unit of samurai and, and warrior monks, and I think. I was still thinking I could probably just run at these people um, and, and just give it a go. But then again... How did that work out for you? Well, we'll find out in a while. And then you, you you're starting to get into the, the the slightly unappealing field. But then on this far flat, what did you think was going to happen there when they've, they've extended bowmen and spears right almost up to the edge of the table? Surely that door is shut. Well, firstly... That, that's not looking too great but firstly in front of the samurai um, that's a target that's where we're going to win that's where we're going to do well so that attack has got to go in okay so the cavalry facing spears and bows in the field <coughs> um, they've got to support the main attack you've got to um, if you're going to throw an attack in you've got to support it and um, after some frantic flicking through the rules of how rough terrain affected the heavy spears and cav and stuff it wasn't too bad so okay. the recovery had to come up and support the main attack because if we're going to try and win the game this is one of the places where that one's going to happen so you're you're saying this very strong force you're just pinning it frontally really that's yes. it okay all right um so over here 
Um, this must have been Dave. He's doing some tricky measurement <laughs> stuff. He's pre-planning it. He's got all his measuring sticks out. It <laughs> does look like they're, they're laying some pipe work, um, you know, literally, not, not metaphorically. And, um, and, you know, it's Bowman thinking about taking on Samurai. Samurai thinking about taking on Bowman. Possibly this is the... Um, this must be an unreliable command. They've got some got some distance. Um, they've got some distance as well. Um, but he's pushing bits and pieces forwards, and I'm still tempted to have a go in a in a big straight line. But but I'm in no hurry, you know, because you've got that good opportunity on the left against those those bowmen as long as you can keep the the people pinned. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if he comes to you. Okay. Well, I thought <laughs> I'll give him some time. I'll fall back. Um, it's it's actually doable you know as long as the in adlg as long as the enemy aren't too close you can turn a whole block of troops just start to move march them backwards can't do it forever because you run out of table you know un unlike the the six foot by four foot game the smaller table here means you're going to run out of table so run out of time. i'll take you on i can do him i can do oh let's run away well you know it, it's tricky you, you, you say about um going forwards and then coming back but possibly what I was doing was something so sophisticated, I'd even convince myself that's what I was going to do. The brave Sir Robin. And once, once I'd convinced myself, it was inevitable that, that I would also be able to um, convince the enemy that that's what I was going to do. So I drew them on and then changed my own mind and, and caught them completely on the hop. But or, or also maybe the other way is saying in the photo on the website, you get a great view of the front of the troops. That's good. You don't actually really know what you're doing here, do you? I haven't got a clue. I'm just faffing around. I'm just faffing around. I'm just drawing them in to their doom. So you here, you know, talking about not knowing what you're doing, you, this is your cavalry lining themselves up for a, a rapid advance towards infantry in rough terrain. <clears throat> what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Had you actually read the rules by here, or were you just thinking, I, you know, actually, were you thinking, here is an opportunity, or were you thinking, look, I've just got to support the samurai advance because they'll probably win. Well, it's what I was actually, I was thinking two things. First of all is the samurai advance is that's, that's the good attack, so it needs to be supported. And this, we had just got to the point where I'm getting close to that field or I was thinking, I can't be asked to read the rules. I'll just ask Tim what the rules are about fighting in a rough. And uh, you looked at the rules for me and told me. Okay, that's good. So would you be, would you say you were playing the rules or were you playing what you might call the meta game that you know proper tactics of pin them push there or, or were you thinking oh this this works from a game mechanics point of view well i'm the, the i think explain the meta tactics of this is where we're going to bring push there but reading the rules to see how the fight mm -hmm. might, might work mm -hmm. out ain't cheating no i suppose it's not it's not um so oh <laughs> completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, we completely forgot the middle. So, so this is the peasants on on the right, and this is some other heavy foot samurai. So we've actually got a line of peasants and heavy foot samurai, not a line, a, a small line that is turning and falling back from the night. So, so once we've turned, they advance three, we we fall back two. They advance three, we fall back two. So there's a bit of time we can buy here, but those knights in the middle are going to score that open goal and it's more a question of can we delay that until you know we we've won or done better on the wings mm -hmm. this is a classic um samurai can i i think possibly is that can i is that the one where they fall back in the middle i'm not oh yes is that how you pronounce it i was gonna it's can he can, can he I... can you hear yeah no that's the scottish version can he man is it, is it can I? Because I've never been sure. I'm not entirely sure either. It's right. like the path in Kaha. Kaha. <laughs> I've never been sure about that one either. All right. So so your men are in um, in what looks like a lake of wee here. Yep. Um, and, and Oh, he's done the same. He's learned from us. Yeah. He's turned and fled. I was most most chuffed, actually. Well, um, his troops didn't stand there and get beaten by better people. Absolutely. That, but... Shocking, shocking. It's almost like there's a game involved in this. Yeah, decisions. And, and then these must be the two the two samurai who, who got sent off from my central command earlier. They, they're now starting to be quite a long way away from, from the rest of what my army is supposed to be doing, I think. A bit tricky. But, you know, nothing in front of them. It all looks good. It all looks good. We turn around again. We turn around. We're back into the village. Nothing, nothing like indecisiveness. Or possibly it is. I'm not entirely sure. And um, we're moving the trees around. We're getting close to the pond. I'm, I'm just sat here thinking I've got four swordsmen 
it appears that Dave's got three. What could possibly go wrong? And then if I can push through the village, I can hopefully jump out of it and mug some of his bowmen who have butted up against it with the swordsman as well. So it's not bad. It's, you know, that's just a numbers game there. Um, that's not looking that's good. That's not looking good at all. Although these are all chaps up here, aren't they? They are, yeah, actually. So, so this is actually it. So we have fallen back in the middle um, with the heavy foot. The knights are coming forwards because that's sort of what they do. They're pretty unmaneuverable. They're mm -hmm. they're impetuous. They take once they're in charge range, they take three pips to, to do anything other than chug forwards. Um, and it is going to be tough for them to advance into this valley of doom without exposing their flanks. So. You know, it is the most obvious tactic. The only clever thing about it is how you pronounce it. Ha uh, ha. Mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of working. And, you know, I'm looking at this picture myself thinking four heavy foot in the middle. They do look badly exposed and a really easy target. It's very difficult not to not to charge that, even though um, the cows have come up. Um, oh, the cows of doom, yeah. The cows of doom are back um, after, after another turn. So... Here's you. Here's you on, on that left flank. You're out of the, the field of wheat. Yeah. Um, He's turned around to start shooting at me. Um, and then, I mean, his, in his field is quite interesting because he's got one unit spear, heavy foot, not in the field, and oh. then some in the field. So um, his spear, they're actually a target against our two-handed weapon. They are, actually, yeah, because um, you get the plus. With an overlap. And yeah. again, his bows that he's now turned around is still a target. That's why we've still got to do them. So we've still got to be Actually, no, I think that at this point, they might still be running away. Oh, are they? I think they possibly are. Ah, we're chasing them. Chasing them. Yeah. And so here you've got, in the field, or at the extremity of the table, he's got two units of bowmen. Um, but you're sat there with one, two, three, four, I presume five units of cavalry. Because that, that was a block of fire. Oh no, the yellow ones there. Yeah. You've got four units of cavalry against two bowmen. Um, I bowmen are good, but... I only shoot two inches against this four, but if I can move from outside four to two, he doesn't get any free shots. Was he was he elite there, or was he just ordinary? I think he's ordinary. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't oh, okay. have elite. Whereas so, I'm elite. That makes a big, big difference. Okay. okay. So, so this isn't... Yes, you can actually see. So it looks like you were coming off... A bit the worse in the early shooting rounds, but he's extended the spear out. And Just giving me another one to have a go at. That's another one to have a go at. Yeah, you charge into those every day of the week, wouldn't you, on, on that wing? So so he's got a little block, five wide, and your four cavalry, five samurai. So you're nine against five, to all intents and purposes, with reserves. That and he's, he's got to keep bringing, bringing troops back to protect flanks, which um, is giving me more and more targets. Okay, so this is just where... Quality and, and quanti quality and quantity are on your side here on, on that left wing for us. That sounds like quite a good position to be in. It does, doesn't it? That's all good. Ah. Samurai. <laughs> Kendo attitude. You've got to have a positive attitude. So so finally, in the middle, about this point, we've drawn the knights in so far that, that we have to turn around and, and fight them with the heavy foot. And this is, you know, I'm thinking this is the previous two games. We know these heavy foot are resilient because... We've had people fighting them with overlaps and they've survived. Just they're tough, tough things. A lot of hits, a lot of quality. And one and thing we've done really well is the first round class of those knights were a big, long, heavy, scary looking nine line. His charge, he's managed to make contact with two knights in the yeah. first charge. So we've been peeling them off both sides. And as soon, as soon as they get broken up, it just creates command and control problems. Mm -hmm left, right and centre, it makes it very, very difficult to, to do that. The Ashigaru are brought up, they must be quivering a bit, but <coughs> but they're, they're holding it and everybody's now looking at, at the flanks of that knight unit as our centre has fallen back. So, well, we're looking at the flanks of the knight unit, but but that bit right earlier on in the game where where my central command split into two and, and two of the units were sent off to help you and then the heavy foot stayed in the middle, that's now ended up with with the two units that were sent to help you being too far away, which, you know, you get decent command and control dice, that's not a problem. You roll a couple of ones, suddenly those two units were were quite a worry for us, really. Yeah, you, you didn't think that one through, really. I didn't did think you? that through, no, 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 no. But they were there to send to help you, so you didn't um, didn't think that through either. But if you're going to make commitments of supporting me, then you should 
I should just be committed. Think it through. Yeah. It needs a it needs a bacon attitude, really, doesn't it? You know, it's a it's a bacon based breakfast attitude. So, in talking about committed, suddenly the warrior monks are committed. This is the village. All the houses have been moved away for for combat. They're only made out of paper. They're easy to pick up and, and just shuffle aside. And um, and Dave has actually <coughs> quite cleverly brought in some some javelin men, light infantry. Sorry, not javelin men, light foot with javelins who in, well. in terrain, in close terrain, are, are nearly as good as real troops, mm -hmm. and sometimes better, actually, in, in the first round. It's the place Lightfoot can stand up. So he's got good pips, he's manoeuvred around, and suddenly he's got overlaps against the, um, against the swordsman. So he's on the front foot here, actually. But am I that worried? You know, this turns from a, a place where I think the, the warrior monks can, can force the pace to one where... Even with an overlap or so, I think it's going to be an exchange. Maybe I'll lose slowly. And Lightfoot only take two hits. The only foot only takes. But more importantly, this the longer this fight in the village on, on my right flank goes on, the more time I have to get into the bowmen who are sat here, who are the super squishy target. And, and in this gap, I've got proper samurai outside the village who, who now can race forward. As long as they can race forward before this combat on their right is resolved, we should be able to get some some target rich environment malarkey mm. going on there. And here, the cows, the cows are in for for a proper charge against some rather surprised knights, I believe. And um, and this was this was starting to get a bit scary because you know there's the knights are at an angle when the cows can form, the cows can very easily die very easily die it's just a lottery there's no science to scythe chariots at all complete lottery so if they die they do damage to the people behind them but it was just a chance and and this was this was the time the cows have been waiting for they knew their job they were focused they've been well trained well briefed, well briefed. yep they'd seen all the powerpoints they were straight so in how did it work out let's see how it worked out well let's Ooh. see on your flank actually so this is you sending what, swordsman into the spearman? Yep, which is a good fight for us. He takes four hits, but um, we're better at fighting than him. And you win on a draw. Yeah, win on a draw. Win on a and I'm elite. He's not. He's got an overlap. Um, but again, it's like he's got the overlaps. And the um, exchange of bow fire is uh, going quite well. Oh, yeah. He's, he's starting to pick up some markers mm. right on the right on the outside flank. So your four cavalry are actually starting to get the edge on his two. Because as two well point. as being elite, I'm getting extra shooters in. That's all working quite well. So, so in the middle, this wave of knights has started to break through the end of our heavy foot. But you know, this is one lost unit of heavy foot. And look at the, you know, the points, mm -hmm. the strike power, all of these knights. At the moment, all they've done is kill one heavy foot. And we're deep into the game. Mm -hmm. You're into their flank. We're, we're fighting on the right. We've, kept, we've fallen back and kept their best troops out of it. Um, so here... All of a sudden, your win. Well, hey. Whoa! Did this did this creep up on you? Did you just knock them all over in one turn? Oh, no, I can't remember. But, <laughs> but it looks spectacular. I got it? four chaps shooting against two, um, and suddenly they're all gone. Him shooting at me, it's one all. Me shooting at him, it's zero all. So that's fine. But I'm having more shooters, and I'm elite. So suddenly, those spearmen must have been completely breaking it. To um, be honest, I imagine they're still. They're in the field, so they yeah. go down, but cavalry charging into the field isn't great, but we'll have an overlap. Um, and I think I went in to take away the overlap against the medium foot, because that's where we needed to win. Okay, that was where you were doing well. So so here are you, you still only take a one marker. You've got something back there, maybe something back there. So, and that's a general, that's not really an overlap. So, so you're fighting halberdiers against spearmen, which is just always a good place to be. Okay. So the knights coming forwards, that wave of knights is breaking against the, the wall of heavy foot here in the middle. That, that little block of four, one of them's gone down, three of them are winning. That's the way it tends to work. That elite can be important. Can't that elite's it? tough. He's, oh, that one's nearly gone, but, but still, you know, what's the worst happening? If all four of mm -hmm. them go, that's eight points out of our 40, 30, 35, something like that, break point on the army. The rest of the knights are now in penny packets. They're chasing at that stuff, but everywhere they're chasing in has got overlap. So, so that fall back, threaten their flanks, break up their formation, textbook stuff. Well. 
Um, and the cow is still going. <laughs> the cow has failed to lose, astonishingly. I think by now it's chewed through at least one line of knights. Dave's bringing stuff up desperately to support it. Um, even cavalry and all sorts, but the cows are still doing well um, against all the odds. It's Troikos, and sometimes Troikos goes your way. Sometimes the, you know, the, 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 hoot, the, the boot is on the other hoof, I suspect. Um, so you're fully in against the, the left flank here. Yeah. Is this is this mop it up time or is this chance your arm well, time? No, Are you getting bored? It's still <clears throat> it's still us having an advantage, but it's a close, not an easy fight. It's not. It's a close fight. We got rid of the bows and we're going in and we're pushing it, so we're kind of winning, but um, it's still not easy because it's he's doing the heavy trick of I can take. Um, he's doing the heavy foot trick of I can take four hits. True. So. Ah, there you go. That's the breakthrough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Finally, one of your swordsmen breaks through the middle of his line, mm -hmm. and suddenly everything else is is overlapped and in in a world of trouble. And all these cavalry now got free reign on on that far side. Yeah, can't argue that. Me free shoot, yeah. flank, etc. Cow's finally gone, but look at that. That's that's chewed up what three, four knights there. The, mm -hmm. the samurai stepping forward and. Look at these bowmen. This target. is what we want. They've been, you know, as the cows have killed knights, the bowmen have suffered trying to support them. And all of a sudden, even though I've taken some hits with my samurai, I've got to fancy my chances against normal bowmen when I'm going in with elite swordsmen. That's got to be a win. So, so this bit here, just in front of the um, the field of we, um, you're you're pushing into the middle. I think you're wheeling outwards. His his bow had run around away so quickly there was a big gap so this is where we're trying to go into the flank of his knight so he's now trying to shore up that gap okay so the, the knight's are charged for and this is the right flank of the knight advance down the middle then yeah his right flank of it you're, tr you're trying to roll it up and he's trying to shore it up by by plugging those gaps with mm -hmm. actually that's pretty hodgepodge isn't it there's cavalry there's knights there's bowmen there's just everything in throwing everything in um what's happening here um this oh these this is following up from the cows. He goes through his bows. As we said, you know, we've been looking for this opportunity for a long time. Finally, the the, the cows have broken it, and then the the samurai just going straight through them like like samurai knives through butter. Um, yeah, I can see how broken up that is actually. That's um that flank where you where he's trying to hold you back. That's I've no idea what's happening. That's I think we're slowly down. winning. We're slowly chopping it up. It's, yeah, it's just a breakdown, isn't it? It's, it's the battle's becoming more complex as, as casualties mount. And then that must have been it, my lord. So that's wow. So yeah, you, maybe there's you know just sheer weight of numbers. Yeah, you took, both flanks. You took some casualties on this flank. I took some on our flank. On my um, flank, that's the army. And we got there, and then it's done. So another surprising result. In three fact, three. And that was enough time, to, if I remember correctly, um, to get away early enough. To, to actually have a proper Sunday lunch. And it was a nice Sunday lunch it as was well. A it was actually a really good Sunday lunch. Great Yorkshire puddings, nice pint with it. Nothing nothing to dislike. you got to love burn. you got to love burn, haven't you? Yeah. 